Think is a promising solution. Instance matching is the process that discovers different descriptions of the same object and links them with an old same as link. For example, these are two different descriptions of the same person. The aim of instance matching process is to detect that they refer to the same real world object who is the Argentinian footballer Messi and links them with an old same as link. Traditional systems for instance matching depend on the quality of property matching results, which are not always obvious for the lot scenario. In this paper, we propose a schema-free instance matching approach that is independent of property matching results. We transform the instance matching problem to a clustering problem and we solve it by sending hierarchical clustering algorithm. In the following, we detail the different steps of the proposed approach. So, after loading source ontologies and extracting their instance data, the preprocessing step represents each instance from both ontologies as virtual document, containing the discriminative property values which are specified in a configuration file. The output of this step are the sets of source and target virtual documents to prepare the input data to the cluster algorithm all virtual documents are aggregated in a single set the ascendant hierarchical clustering is the core step of our system because it gives the main part of the mappings between input instances the obtained mappings are filtered to eliminate wrong mappings and gives the final results for our system. Now we will describe each step of our approach in detail. So, in the preprocessing step, we use the discriminative properties such as labels, dates, numbers, links, etc. to construct virtual documents for each instance. For example, if the following properties are specified as discriminative properties for the first instance, it will be represented by the following virtual document. The same thing for the second instance. So after specifying its discriminative properties, it will be represented by the following virtual document. And the similarity between both instances will be simply computed as the distance between the their virtual documents. The aggregation step consists of preparing input data for the clustering algorithm by aggregating all virtual documents in a single data set. In the sending hierarchical clustering step, each document will initially form a singleton cluster. So, there are as many clusters as the number of instances or virtual documents. Then, the matrix of similarity between all instances is computed. And the closest two clusters are recursively merged in a single cluster until all clusters are merged in a single cluster. The hierarchical grouping of clusters is depicted by the following dendrogram. Before interpreting the obtained results and scaling out similar documents, the obtained dendrogram tree is cut using two specified heuristic rules. The first one, the maximal number of instances by cluster is two. Then, a threshold value is reached. Finally, each obtained cluster containing two instances is interpreted as a mapping between those instances and the set of obtained mappings will be filtered in the last step based on some specified filter patterns. Firstly, if both instances of the same cluster are formed 
the same source data set, then the resulting mapping will be eliminated. Then, if both instances of the same cluster are from different data sets but belonging to disjoint classes, then the resulting mapping will be eliminated. After that, if one instance from the first data set has more than one similar instance from the other data set, then these mappings are eliminated. In the following, we will present the experimental results of our system. So, to improve the efficiency of our system and to enable the comparison with obtained results, or, and to enable comparison of obtained results with those of other approaches, we have conducted we have conducted experiments on standard and recent benchmark ontology alignment evaluation initiative 2019 and 2020. We have used the datasets from spin bench ontologies of the instance matching track. The performances of our system are measured by computing the CAL and F measure score, and the obtained results are presented in the following table. By comparing these results with participating systems in Ontology Alignment Evaluation Initiative 2019, we found that our system outperforms all of them in F measure score, and it gives very close results to the best performer reminder in Ontology Alignment Evaluation Initiative 2020. As a conclusion, so to integrate data in the log cloud, instance matching is a prominent solution. In this paper, we have proposed a schema-free instance matching approach that is independent of property matching. We transform the matching problem to a clustering problem and we solve it by a Sunday hierarchical clustering algorithm. Obtained mappings are then filtered based on some structural information. Our contribution is not complete and it may be enhanced by other perspectives such as Integrate an indexation technique to scale out primary candidate mappings. This will reduce significantly the number of comparisons and eliminate a lot of unmatched instances. Use contextual information such as neighboring instances where instances with similar neighbors are similar. This will detect more correct mappings and improve the F measure score, etc. Thank you for your attention. Shukran, Ustad Siham. Within the time, if there is any questions or comments from our audience, do you want to say anything in addition, Mr. Siham? Mr. Siham? No, no. Do you have any هل عندك أي تعليق آخر على ال presentation؟ لا هذا هذا ما عندي فقط. نعم شكرا. هل هذا ال يعني ال العرض لي عرض لي برنامج تجريبي أو أو هل هو برنامج مستخدم يعني وتم إجراء الدراسة عليه؟ لا هو احنا احنا we have proposed this uh, this system it's a new system yes هل في تساؤل اخر من احد الحضور شكرا جزيلا استاذ سهام شكرا على العرض وعلى التقديم شكرا ننتقل الى الان we'll go now to the second paper in this session and it's entitled a framework for online customer review system using sentiment scoring methods. Uh, this paper is uh, presented by uh, uh, Mr. B. Dariz uh, Ahmed uh, and D. Yubaraj. 
Who who is the presenter? Mr. Baris, you are with us. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Bashir Ahmad. I would like to present myself. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, Dr. Bashir. Go ahead. Yes, yes thank you so much. Uh, sorry, it's written as there is, so that's why I present to you, Mr. Bashir. Dr. No Bashir problem. Ahmed. Go ahead, Dr. Dr. No Bashir problem. Ahmed is from the University of Technology and Applied, and Applied Science in, in Oman. And you have uh, 10 minutes, Dr. Bashir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Thank, Thank you so much, Dr. Sarif. So yeah. I would like to continue my paper. My paper title is a framework for online customer review system using sentimental score method. So before starting, I would like to. Sorry. Yes. Before starting, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Bashir Ahmad from IT department. University of Technology and Applied Science, Almosana. So my abstract, so web-based social networking remaining remain spontaneous nowadays. The scenario, the, the, that means the users likes to purchase the product through the online. There are a large number of individuals want to sell the product or purchase the product through the online. So they want to do the business in the online. So the web, web users, shares their own experience about the product in the social networking sites. So we call the reviewer as a raters. We have sometimes positive reviewers, sometimes we have negative reviewers. We need to identify the reviewers based on their reviewing methodology. So in our paper, we explain the web surveys, how pre-processing, how stop words, removal and stemming process has been done. After making that pre-processing, stop word removal and stemming process, <clears throat> we are started to cluster all their reviews based on their K mediates. So finally, we have given the overall evaluations based on their scores. We call that as a cumulative scores. These scores shows that uh, which were which are the users are trusted, which are the users are not trusted. So the introduction is the web users usually they will participate in the web. They want to provide a feedback and they want to create a interaction environment. Some user will give the positive sense and some user they will give the negative sense, even though product is good. They have to enable who is enabled in the customers. They want to make necessary decisions to participate in the online feedback sections. Generally, we classified the reviewers into two groups that is called facts and op opinions. What is fact? The entities and events in the world have objects, objective statement. We call as a fact. What is an opinion? They are the part, particular statement that replicates the people's sentiments or discriminates. So what is our motivation of this research is to design and build the innovative product and product analysis. The main advantages of this process, we need to make an accuracy accuracy of the customer reviews whoever give the reviews we need to give that analyze the reviews based on their uh, feedback that for the opinion meaning and we used the sentiment analysis process so that we can classify the uh, positive reviewers and the negative reviewers so we have identified some related works first one is classification of reviews there are many authors who work under this category of classification of reviews so what they did, they demonstrate the duplications of topical terms, which has been introduced. So they use the basic cor correspondence learning, BCL model. So he has given the positive or negative, and he was supposed to give the supporter vector machines, which is to classify the reviewers. So he, these are the process. This diagram shows the clusters, clusterings of reviews. So whatever the reviews, which has been applied in the online, so the reviews are taken as a raw reviews. Then they are classified into positive reviews, negative reviews, and even they have been classified into fake reviews. So these reviews are taken pre-processed. First, they have to be stop removal, stop word removal, and stemming process has been done. Finally, we find the similarity between the two reviews, and we classified based on their final statement. So these are the some authors we have been. Uh, taken as a uh, previous reviews, pre previous research, which is carried by the different authors. 
so these are the different authors who carried they used their different methods finally they used supervised and non supervised and even semi supervised so their data sets what they have taken some authors they they taken as a movie review some authors they taken as a product review some authors they taken as a restaurant reviews and some authors they taken as a twitter sentiments so based on their classifications they used the several methods svm navy base and graph based association mining rule based mining they have taken as a sentiment scoring so for the evaluation what we are going to do in the evaluation measures first we need to measure the similarity measures for classifications of the review so first there is a numerous informations which is especially we use the text mining systems for grouping and categorizations based on their quantities between these items so we used cosine similarity measure why we used to a cosine measure similarity measure means these cosine similarity measures will find the closeness between the two vectors of the measurement between the two points we need to find the two points suppose one author is giving the positive one other author giving the same uh, negative in another side so we need to find the uh, the two vectors for this process we use the cosine similarities here we use this formula where this dij we are called dkj is the jth term of di in the record so each and every record we have some range that range is will start from 0 and 1 so next one is di similarity measures here we observe the closeness coefficients files between the two between the two such varieties when you are comparing with the two documents which is d1 and d2 are compared we have taken this two document to find the di similarity measures next one is jacquard similarity measures is used here to find the similarity between the two document for example if you take that document the total number of document which is been integrated with the total number of document between the two document <clears throat> the two common words what are they used in the particular survey the feedback has been classified according to their uh, number of document which is been retrieved and number of document which is not retrieved so here for this process we used to find the exactness of the review we use the f measure so f measure will give the precision in the division and the reports that that they are important to the client data so whatever the document which is relevant to the particular product or review which is been integrated with the retrieved document so total number of retrieved document we call as a precision whereas the recall is a, sent, a segment of document that is relevant to the query that is effectively retrieved in the particular uh, review products so recall will be precision recall will be done for the uh, exactness of the f measures so f measures will be the finally calculated by 2 into precision multiplication of recall divided by the precision plus recall so that we can we'll, we will get the f measures of this particular product so finally we need to find the accuracy why we need to find the accuracy so finally after reviewing we are going to make a quasin we are going to make a similarity after making the similarity we need to conclude to find the accuracy of the result so for making the accuracy we made the formula tp plus tn total divided by tp plus tn and fp plus fn true positive and true negative divided by true positive true negative false positive and false negative so that we can able to get the accuracy of the sentiment so whoever give the uh, positive comments whoever give the negative comments we are going to calculate and finally we'll find the accuracy of the process so from this product we are going to get what we proposed in the documents we collected the nine documents which is shown in the table so we collected the nine documents we classify the documents into three three files into one one group so these groups will make that will files comes under the each groups so after making this group we are going to cluster into the next one so when we are going to cluster we use the k medias what is the use of this k medias it will discover the k groups in the each questions whatever the questions which is asked in that online systems it will find the k medias for the each bunch so when we are finding the k medias we need to find the cost functions for the particular distance distance between the two documents so i need to find the distance between the two documents so i will keep the k as a cost functions here to measure the participation cost we took five different me uh, methods for 
making the clustering phase. First one is method one is distance plus one. Second method is distance two plus k. Distance three is for distance plus k minus one. Distance method four is for distance two plus k plus one. The last one is distance two plus k two. So why we are taking this much of method? We need to compare the two documents and we need to find the exact the cost of the particular document for the accuracy. So here we taken the different documents i explained in the previous slide we have classified the number of documents into three three groups after making the three three groups i need to find the participation cost so using this k mediate i find that this will give the distance between the two different documents we call a set term frequencies so here i taken we taken the online reviews so which deliver by the users we call as a textual form so we use electronic items, entertainment, fun, sports, healthcare. So in previous, many authors have worked on the movie, restaurant review. So I have taken, we have taken this field, electronics, entertainment, fun, sports, healthcare. From that, we have taken some reviews from that online. So through that online, we have taken number of reviews, what is going to be occupied. From that, we have classified the steps, which is we use some pseudo code to proceed the, you uh, have to classify the documents. So we extracted the audit, we pre-processed the surveys, and we put the scoring statement, scoring the sentence, whatever we have been obtained for based on the reviews. So finally, we analyzed based on the repositioning, and we are finally, we are given that this method, recommendation method for the final publications. So here we used FIO, FO, that is called the, sometimes we take that inverter words, and sometimes we get, we take in the words unbiased words. Sometimes we take that interfere inter op options word pair like that. We have classified the documents based on that story. So we put whatever the statement which is given by the user. Some users will give this product is good. This product I feel that camera is good like that. The term will be used by the users. So we use the term, the term frequency we want to face. For example, the particular user is giving that recommendation that this product is good, is great. It is happiness to me like that. I take that particular word, that word is called great. If the user is given great, automatically I have given the score as plus five. If it is the given is poor, if there is given is negative feedback, if they are given is okay, I feel the product is okay. Like that, I feel that what word is giving more precisions? For that precisions, I have given the score ratings. For example, if I give quiet, so I make that intensifier as 0 0.8. So quite good means then I will maybe divided it bit by 0 0.8, that is into multiplication of five, because I have mentioned great is for plus five. Like that, I have made a, I have given a evaluation for this product and I have given one positive and negative feedback. I have been separated. If it has been fine, I have taken the review for the particular camera, for the digital camera. So I have given this positive score and negative score. By classification of the score, I have been classified into positive score and negative scores. So can these I scores... To, can I to conclude? Victor, yes. Here? Yes, sure. So this my conclusion is, so opinion mining is a dynamic research here where the web user is actively participating in the so social networking. So they want to do the positive product. They want to give the negative product. So when they were giving the negative feedback or positive feedback, we need to classify that who is a positive person, who is a negative person, who is giving the fake uh, document. By classification, we can recommend this product to the online so that every customer can easily can identify which one is a positive review, which one is a negative review, so they can able to purchase in the online. So we can eliminate the fake reviewers and the product can be sold easily in the online. So this study will be giving the opinion for the reviewers across the different time intervals to measure the usefulness and the reviews. So these are my reference and thank you for your wonderful support and for my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Bashir. Thank you. For your presentation and for your informative uh, review. Uh, is there any questions from the audience? Do anyone have any question? I have one question. Uh, the reviewers, are they yes. structured reviewers or public reviewers? You it's a public, it? open or public reviewers. It's uh -huh. an open environment in the online systems. It is a social media who are giving. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you.
Thank you so much. If there is no other question, we will go to the uh, third presentation, which is on the use of uh, topic um, the use of topic modeling in mining customers reviews. Uh, the presenter is uh, Shuruq Fathi, Shuruq Fathi Tair, Khulud Ibrahim Al Qaisi, and Ghalib Awad Al Rifai. Uh, who is present? Uh, who will present this uh, paper? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Uh, I am I am Shuruk, and I, I would like to present. Okay. Go ahead, please. The floor is yours. Please take your time. It's ten minutes. Uh, my paper title: The use of topic modeling in mining customer reviews. Um, first, I would like to show my, my outline is. I will talk about introduction, uh, the study aim, topic, uh, a brief description of topic modeling, the methodology, results, and discussion, conclusion, and further research. Do you have any PowerPoint presentation? Do you have any slides? Yeah, I have PowerPoint, but I, I, how can I share it? With... Uh, uh, the, we open the sharing for you. Go ahead and... Uh... Uh, how can I... What, what, oh, okay. Go down there, okay. sharing, and choose the, the window. Yeah, sharing. Okay, now. So now I can share? Yeah. I don't know. It, I don't, uh, I can't, um, I, I can't, I can't find the link where I can share. Just I, I it's, what should it's, I do? Uh, it's a green, a green arrow uh, down the, the screen. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I got it now. Now, can you see? Mm, not yet. Yeah? You can see that? Not on my screen, no. Okay, share screen. Okay. And then choose the window you are. Uh, yeah. yeah, now. I think it's coming down, yes. Now we yeah. can see, go ahead. Well, <clears throat> our work titled The Use of Topic Modeling in Mining customers, uh, Customers' Reviews. The outline introduction and study aim. I will talk briefly about topic modeling, the methodology, results, and discussion, conclusion, and further research. As you know, social media is becoming one of the most influential tools in this century. The user generated content and the electric word of the mouth are an efficient or an effective way to convince customers of products and services offered online. The user-generated content and text reviews constitute a massive source of information for decision-making. Customers' online reviews are promising and unstructured data sources because they influence the purchasing decisions of other customers. This study proposes the application of topic modeling method called latent Dirichlet allocation, LDA, to, task the, uh, to the task of analyzing customer reviews regarding their experience with meal delivery services to identify aspects of service quality that met customers' expectations and those that did not. This can help management gain insights to provide better personalized services and in order also to improve the business performance. Topic modeling is an unsupervised machine learning algorithm that can be used to analyze 
understand, organize, and detect hidden, hidden topics in texts to make more informed decisions. Topic model algorithms can be exploited to capture different dimensions from customers' reviews that refer to what they like and what they don't like. And at the same time, what are the items of its strength and, the, uh, and weaknesses? Topic modeling about identifying what is the common theme that all documents, what I'm talking in this, uh, in my research, all reviews collectively talking about. Latent Dirichlet allocation is basically a topic modeling algorithm used to identify hidden patterns and assign topics within documents. As you can see in this, the input for the topic modeling algorithm is the text reviews, and the output is uh, are the clusters, which we we uh, we name them topics. What are these the reviews talking about? Methodology, the current study used an original data set of 1,163 customer reviews collected from the delivery service of three fast food restaurants on a platform in UK. The data was prepared using RapidMiner, uh, RapidMiner software, uh, stub words, uh, stub were removed and also numbers, punctuation marks, Letters were converted into lower case in order to uh, reduce differences between similar words. Tokenization was performed to split a string into meaningful words and convert the text into attributes. Stimming was also performed to reduce the number of words and obtain a word stim. After that, we applied the LD technique. The LD technique was applied to detect latent themes in the reviews. The LDA topic analysis allows the extraction of latent, uh, uh, of latent topics from the data. There is no prior knowledge about the number of latent topics that might con be contained in the corpus or in the text. A number of iterations were performed with different number of topics. Uh, we uh, many trials were made, uh, two, three, four, and the optimal result was obtained with five topics. Now, results, uh, the analysis uh, revealed uh, that we have five topics within the text. Uh, what we got here in this uh, table, table one, uh, uh, that we have five topics and the, the, the most five words uh, that were mentioned highly in these, in each topic are mentioned here. So like for topic zero, which is, I, I mean, zero, zero, zero represent topic zero, uh, the first topic, uh, food, late, order, uh, called, time, and uh, time, these the main, uh, the most uh, frequent words mentioned within this topic, and the same, are done for topic uh, number one, topic number two, three, and four, and etc. Now, the themes are referred to as topics, each which is a back of words is accompanied by five, the five most frequent words in each topic. A topic is considered as a probability distribution over a fixed vocabulary. Now, the five most frequent words mentioned in the previous table, we took them and we put them in a theme. So because here we had in the first uh, topic, we had food, late, order, and cold. And this, we named it, uh, it is a kind of a critique to the order. The order, uh, some uh, something was not satisfactory in the order. And here in, 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 uh, in topic number two, we had food always hot, delivery good. And this is what, like we, it is talking about the food quality. So it is a kind of praise for the food quality. Here we have uh, one menu change last orders. So it is about a critique to the service quality. 
we named this topic. Uh, chicken called food burger chips. So here it is talking about the main, uh, the main uh, meal or the main uh, uh, thing in the meal. Um, we had here uh, order chicken, naan, sauce, bread. So these are the ciders of the meal. So we try to name the topics based on uh, uh, what they mean. Maybe somebody else will have different uh, um, naming. So these are the, we can say these are the five clusters uh, that we got from the reviews and we try to name them according to uh, the quality of service or a quality of food uh, mentioned uh, in the reviews. As we can see, the, uh, the extracted themes in, uh, revealed some problems related to ordering, which indicated in that the speed is particularly important for customer satisfaction. Food quality and service quality are among the issues raised by the customers. The temperature is the main, uh, 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 the temperature of the main meal is the issue for the customer also. Uh, conclusion, we can conclude here that uh, LDA topic modeling method was used to capture latent teams in customer feedbacks uh, in order to identify the customer's hidden, uh, hidden perceptions and feelings about the meal delivery services. Uh, the extracted themes revealed that uh, there are very important variables for customer satisfaction, such as food quality and service and the food, uh, the food uh, speed also is very important. Completeness of the order is very important. And uh, uh, these are the most mentioned uh, uh, key themes within the customer reviews. Um, analyzing customers' uh, electric word of the mouth allows management to gain insights into the business process, a product and service. It can also help to provide better personalized services to improve business performance. Um, further research, uh, maybe we can extend the use of uh, LDA algorithm with a larger data set of customer feedbacks to extract hidden themes. Also, we can also use uh, the LDA um, uh, method with uh, a data set of customer reviews with different cultural backgrounds, which, we, which might highlight different perceptions. Thank you. And if you have any question. Shukran, shukran, Ustada Sharouk, shukran, Nahadar Arab Nwafi. Do we have any question? Is there any inquiries? Shukran, Sharouk. Al-Afu, al-Afu, shukran. ننتقل الآن إلى الورقة التالية التي هي بعنوان A Stable Fault Tolerance Algorithm for Leader Crash in Distributed Honeycomb Network هذه الورقة مقدمة من دكتور محمد الرفاعي هو طلب أن نشغل ريكوردد سيشن ريكوردد Presentation. Uh, break, go ahead and uh, start the day, please. Mafia so. A few short break. Take on a distributed system. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين
احنا رايحين نبدا ان شاء الله في عرض الريسيرش ماي ريسيرش طبعا عنوان البيبر ستيبل فولت توليرانس الجوريثم فور ليدر كراش ان ديستريبيوتد هاني كامب نتورك انا محدثكم الدكتور محمد الرفاعي طبعا كانترودكشن انا بدي احكي عن الديستريبيوتد سيستمز ار كولكشن اوف اوتونوماس كمبيوتر سيستمز ذات لوك تو يوزرز از اف ذي ار وان كمبيوتر These systems are cooperating to solve a problem that has been divided into multiple computers or processors to do the best task. The coordinator is in charge of overseeing the system, which entails all nodes communicating with one another. via various network topologies such as hypermesh, Tura, Spring, Honeycomb, Hypercube, and so on. Hardware processors or software processes running on top of other hardware could be used in, the, in these topologies. The main aim of distributed system is to improve problem solving performance by allowing tasks to be performed simultaneously while distributing the load to minimize response time. طبعا ال coordinator في systems هاي coordinator node or any link between nodes encounter a failure event. In centralized control, distributed systems need one node. to serve as a coordinator leader. The distributed leader election algorithm overcomes the problem by appointing a new leader for the network in distributed systems to handle the utilization of a common resource. Leader election algorithm is the process of picking a new coordinator after the previous one fails. It begins when one node observes the failure and complete its role by electing the leader using the node identification that is appropriate. When one node detects a leader loss, the election algorithm begins and ends when the new leader is elected and all other nodes are aware of the new leader. The interconnection topology of uh, Honeycomb Torus has n equals 6 uh, d square nodes. Number of nodes equals 6 d square nodes. Uh, d is the graph dimensions. And uh, also, uh, it's edges 9 d square, number of edges between all nodes. This is the figure of the Honeycomb network. Uh, leader failure uh, uh, طبعا الهاني كامب uh, توبولوجي مشروح بشكل مفصل في uh, البيبر الالجوريثم بيفور ديسكرايبنج ذا الالجوريثم ديفاينز ذا فولوينج فاريبل تو هيلب ان انديرستاندنج ات طبعا في عندي النود ستيتس uh, عندي uh, بتكون ستيت اما نورمال ذا نتورك از نورمال اند ذس نود هاز ايدنتيفايد نو ليدر فيلر ما بتعرف بالليدر فيلر الكانديديت اللي هي عرفت بالليدر فيلر ومرشحه على تو بي ليدر فيلر هاز اوكير اند الكشن بروسيس از كرنتلي اندر واي وذين ذا نود ذا لاست ستيت اللي هي الليدر ان ا ستيبل نتورك اونلي وان نود ماست هولد ذس ستيت اند ات از ابسنت افتر ذا ليدر فيل طبعا السجست الجوريثم از ديفايدد انتو 3 فيزز فيز 1 وير ذا نود ذات ديسكفر ليدر فيلر اكزامينز اتس لوكيشن اند ترانسميت الكشن مسجز تو لينك 1 
when it's on one of the x1 axis circle link two when it's in the x2 axis circle and link three when x3 axis circle and the node enters in a candidate state okay uh, this phase is uh, explained in details in uh, the paper inside the paper phase two when node one minus d zero d complete phase one it transmits an election message across link two and compare the candidate ids from nodes at the end of rings who have complete phase one in phase three the new leader becomes known to the last node in phase two when the election message arrives and it then broadcast the information about the new leader to all nodes by sending a leader a message Final performance evaluation, we find that the number of messages, uh, big O and to the power 1.5, and the time steps, big O uh, square root of N. Uh, this equation, the details of uh, the uh, sub equations for all phases, E uh, for messages and time steps are uh, described inside the paper in uh, section performance evaluation. For future work, this work could be improved in the future to deal with the intermittent or complete connection failure in dynamic algorithm and academics are looking into leader election techniques in various technologies like Hive, and hypermesh networks. This is uh, our paper and this is our work. Thank you for uh, listening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mohammed. Thank you for the presentation and for keeping the time. Uh, is there any questions for uh, Mr. Mohammed? إذا ما في أي أي أسئلة راح ننتقل إلى الورقة التالية وأيضا الدكتور محمد أحد المشاركين فيها وهي بعنوان Databases as Services Debas Challenges and Solutions يقدمها هذه الورقة الدكتور محمد الرفاعي هي المقالي أحمد بوارة وهي وهي القفازة ايضا الدكتور محمد طلب ان هذا ايضا نستخدم البري ريكوردد برزنتيشن فور ذيس سيشن سو بريك جو اهيد بليز اند بلي ذا بري ريكوردد برزنتيشن راح نبدا في البرزنتيشن المتعلق في البيبر اللي تحت عنوان Database as a Service, Challenges and Solutions. طبعا أنا uh, دكتور محمد الرفاعي وهاي uh, المجالي أستاذ uh, دكتور حامد الفواعرة والدكتور هاي الخفاجة uh, هم مؤلفين الأوثرز لهذا uh, البحث. نبدأ طبعا uh, في uh, محتويات uh, هذا البرزنتيشن راح يكون انتروداكشن عن الداتابيز از سيرفيسز التشالنجز فور داتابيز از سيرفيس اللي هما ان افيلابيلتي انتر اوبر اوبرابيلتي ايشوز وكونفيدنشاليتي بعدين السوليوشنز لهذه التشالنجز بعدين كونكلوجن واخيرا الفيوتشر uh, ورك And the cloud uh, services have become one of the trends in the IT industry. The real idea of the cloud computing is to satisfy the client without increasing infrastructure operations at cost. It's easy to use, cost effective, less infrastructure and uh, configuration costs. It has almost a zero maintenance, low operational cost and less effort. Using a cloud service 
to deploy database is known as database as a service, which become one of the most used a cloud service with a time. So on database as a service and the cloud database market is one of the fastest growing software as a service expected to grow more and more by this decade. Data warehouse and data base vendors have joined established cloud providers in offering hosted versions of their software enabling customers to leverage the many benefits of cloud computing for their applications, data storage, search, and access needs. Like any new trend in IT, database service faces many challenges at the forefront like security availability and interoperability. To overcome these challenges, this work discuss them and provide solutions to use database services in an efficient way. Database services database administrator will not be worried about heavy traditional technical issues. The role of database uh, uh, administrator will be reduced. He will just define the requirements in the contract and the cloud service providers will take it over. Database administra administrator will just notify the service provider about these changes and the provider will do the database administrator wants. The great advantage of database as a services or a cloud services in general is the financial issue as the cloud service adopted or adopts be as you go model. This means that the client will not be charged for the time he doesn't use the service. Usage of a public or private would be more cost effective depending on the nature of business, whether it's small, intermediate or huge business. Challenges. The first uh, challenge is unavailability. As you know, all the cloud service providers say that they guarantee 99% availability, which looks pretty good. But what about the remained one percentage? The huge risk of unavailability is that the database is not under the control of the client. Therefore, the client can do nothing. In a private cloud, things would be easier to handle as the services are under the control of the client, even directly or indirectly. So dealing with this situation is more likely to deal with the classical data center. Solution for the unavailability, one of the solution on uh, the service provider's side is the typical data redundant method, which is a good enough solution if the database server is damaged. Then the web server will redirect to the alternative database server. This solution led failure scenarios to be more manageable. And the solution is, the, is to clone the database over a local server on the client side. This clone will still idle but up to date with data and uh, used in emergent cases like unavailability of the cloud service surely will cause the client but still as a plan B for similar cases. The second challenge is inter Operability issues, the scope of interoperability in database services refer to the links between different clouds and the connection between these clouds and the organization's local systems. 
The link between clouds or between each cloud and the local system is considering service interfaces, configuration, authentication, and authorization data format, etc., in order to communicate and interact correctly with each other. Vendor look and surely make the client uncomfortable and frustrated because he cannot do his work freely and fluently. This could be occurring when the client is using database as a service. In such a cloud from one vendor and using a software as a service from another vendor, in this case, what would the client do? For example, if one organization has two systems and two database HR systems like HR systems and ERB system, each system and its database is deployed on two different clouds. How should these two systems interact with each other? The main cause of the lack of interoperability is that every cloud may use different API and these APIs are not standardized. So if an API fit for one cloud, it will not be fit for another cloud. Third challenge is confidentiality. Data confidentiality is the biggest concern for the client due to the uh, to any type of data loss or leakage would cause financial and customer loss to the client, especially for the client who has sensitive data. The main causes for data loss in the cloud are insufficient authorization, authentication, and security mechanism. Therefore, cloud service providers must take into account security and privacy in the first place. Encryption as a solution. Encryption aims to ensure that a third party cloud service provider cannot access the data. The encrypted data is inaccessible unless by the person who has the key. Who is the client himself? Not even the service provider. By encrypting the data, one of the threats will be overcome, which is an insider threat where an internal intruder who wants to break in the data, but simply he cannot because he doesn't know the key. Data go through three different states, data at rest, data in motion, data in use. Uh, the solution for data at rest, transparent data encryption, and data in motion, trans transport layer security, we have transport layer security, data in use client side encryption. The details for the solutions and for the graph is uh, founded in the, uh, the paper as a future work find the new solutions to overcome unavailability rather than the proposed solution where these solutions could not be applicable and efficient for all of database as service clients or database as service providers also to take into account the data migration issue by providing a standard framework finally build a model to ensure the security of insensitive data in order to provide complete security of our database services and to enhance performance during the encryption process for sensitive data that's all for uh, our work uh, thank you for listening Thank you, Dr. Mohammed and uh, his uh, uh, colleagues for this uh, paper and for the presentation. Uh, we are ready to take an, uh, if there's any queries or questions for the presenter.
Thank you, Dr. Seif. You're welcome, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you. If there's no questions, we'll go to the fourth paper, or to the sixth paper, uh, entitled uh, Relational on an SQL Databases, the Appropriate Database Model Choice. This paper is uh, presented or uh, authored by Dr. Professor Mohamed Hassan. And uh, as he asked, we will play the recording for the presentation because Dr. Hassan, Professor Hassan is busy, as he said, right now. Uh, and we will we'll contact him to take uh, if there are any questions later on. Go ahead, break and uh, play the presentation, please. Assalamu alaikum. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Muhammad Hassan from Zalga University, Jordan. Uh, please uh, allow me to share my presentation. My paper title is Relational and NoSQL Databases, the Appropriate Database uh, Model Choice. We will go through a quick introduction, then uh, the advantages and the uh, limitation of relational databases will be uh, introduced. Uh, the NoSQL databases, uh, types, uh, features, uh, challenges also will be uh, introduced, and uh, we will uh, conclude with choosing the appropriate database uh, model. Uh, as we know uh, for over four decades, uh, relational database management system uh, is the dominant, actually, uh, database model for data storage and retrieval uh, and management. Uh, however, uh, the continuous growth in current organization and the increasing need for scalability, scalability and performance, especially while handling very huge amount of data generated by uh, new generation real-time application or so, social uh, networking uh, that have uh, that could have the unstructured or semi-structured data poses a set of challenges to the existing uh, relational database vendors. So uh, such challenges have created a need for adoption alter alternative technology in the field of data storage and manipulation. No SQL technology is the alternative category of such database management system uh, that uh, introduced as a solution to the ever-growing uh, ever data requirements. Uh, as we, we know, there are many database models. Uh, among all of these models, relational databases is the dominant one since was introduced in 97 by code. Uh, relational are highly structured. Uh, the tables are related with primary foreign keys, as we know. Uh, constraints also could be uh, applied to these uh, data within tables. And the major vendors, uh, Microsoft, uh, SQL, uh, DBQ, Oracle, and uh, etc. So, the main advantages of relational could be summarized as the following. Flexibility, simplicity, ease of uh, data retrieval and data integrity. Also abstraction, multi-user uh, access, automatic optimizing uh, for searching. A single uniform data definition is used for different roles. And also a single stand standardized language is used for different relational databases. Also it supported asset properties or constraints uh, where each of these Properties guarantee stability, security, and contribute to the ability of transactions to ensure it. In the meanwhile, uh, there are some challenges and some disadvantages uh, with relational databases management system and could be uh, stated as follows. Uh, they don't they do not support high scalability, uh, not capable of handling exponential growth of data. Uh, setting and maintain. maintaining relational is complex and expensive, even money-wise. Uh, uh, some difficulty uh, 
regarding the store large amount of information in a fixed uh, length fields. Uh, also, data cannot be easily encapsulated. It's difficult to share information from one database to another, especially with complex databases. SQL cannot handle unstructured, this is a major, actually, uh, problem. Uh, cannot handle unstructured data, but documents, email, multimedia, social media efficiently. Uh, also, working with shared relational or multiple data could result difficulties regarding performance issues and data integrity. Uh, so, all of these uh, shortcomings and limitations uh, have led big companies uh, to introduce or to search for uh, non-relational uh, databases, which also common, uh, commonly known as not only SQL, that can handle web scale system and big data system. Uh, no SQL are the new generation of databases that mainly addressing the following properties. It's being non-relational, open source. The aim of developing NoSQL is to handle modern web scale databases and cloud application, which began early 2009. And it's, of course, it's growing rapidly. Uh, there are many features uh, of such uh, database models. The most important, it uh, can handle and retrieve semi-structured uh, and unstructured data very efficiently, as well as structured data. Uh, the main features of NoSQL could be stated as follows. It's non-relational, okay, neither support SQL as their query languages. It's distributed, it's open source, okay, free to download, unlike most of relational databases. It, the most important is it's horizontally scalable. So it has ability to so scale horizontally by increasing or decreasing multiple servers to meet the data processing capacity. It's also a schema free and simple uh, interfaces. Uh, most of NoSQL provide an easy and simple uh, interfaces for data collection and network delivery. Uh, there are uh, different uh, approaches for classifying NoSQL data uh, bases into different categories. The main, the most common used classification are key value, document, column family, and graph databases. Of course, there are much uh, more uh, classification uh, all of these uh, types are uh, presented in the paper with uh, a short description and feature of each type. Uh, some of the main challenges with NoSQL could be uh, stated as follows. These databases do not support an asset. They actually compromise uh, reliability for performance. Uh, also, there is no uniformity. Uh, and no specific uh, programming interface among the different NoSQL databases. Uh, such databases use different query languages. Many NoSQL are considered immature, so it's difficult in maintenance and not good at spreading the database across multiple nodes. In many NoSQL databases, security is lower than relational databases, and this is an important issue, actually. Uh, so, in order to choose or to advise the user to select uh, the appropriate database model, it's important to select carefully the appropriate model for enterprise or the application we intend to create. Many factors uh, should be taken into consideration for such selection. Some of these, the type and the amount of data, uh, where small and medium application um, relation could be reasonable choice. Uh, schema characteristic and the transaction amount are also important factors. The cost, where it's a big advantage for most of NoSQL since they are open source solution. Database administrator or IT specialist should decide using traditional or using NoSQL according to their needs. They should also choose the appropriate type or category uh, according to the format and feature of enterprise. They should then select the specific database system according to the characteristics characteristics of each database they need for uh, the enterprise, as well as the popularity and the feedback about each database on websites. Uh, in general, uh, if the data is document unstructured or semi-structured with advanced query feature, 
or if the data is schemaless or the schema is continuously changing while the consistency is prepared over availability, then use NoSQL database. On the other hand, if the data is structured data or it's extremely relational, while high availability is preferred over consistency, then do not use NoSQL database. So uh, finally, uh, let's look at a recent uh, statistic regarding the popularity of uh, data, uh, database models, uh, which may give uh, uh, an important indicator about the importance of uh, NoSQL databases in uh, October 2021. Uh, the top database according to uh, database engine ranking uh, put uh, the top uh, among the top 10 databases four of them are no sql databases uh, this could be mongo uh, reads uh, elasticsearch and cassandra the growth of no sql databases is happening against the slowing in the relational database model uh, even though NoSQL database keep winning compared, enterprise are keeping their relational databases around relational uh, 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 databases, still dominant big data, and will do for quite some time. And this is the uh, graph that show the top most popular databases. And as we see, uh, Mongo, Reds, uh, Elasticsearch, and Cassandra uh, are among the, those top databases. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks, Dr. Mohammed, for the presentation. And uh, I don't know if he's with us or not to take uh, questions. If anyone have a question? Mr. Mohammed Hassan, are you with us? Well, we will go to the next uh, paper, which is uh, the second paper from UAE, and it's about uh, simulation study for speed control at uh, congested and arms of rounds. The roundabout is a type of intersection. I, I think. Um, yeah, just uh, go ahead, please, and uh, play the recording. Yeah, uh, yeah, as, yeah. as requested, uh, yeah. the, present, the the author of this uh, of this paper is Ahmed Shitnau, Abdul Rauf Dirin, Muhammad Dinati, or Kutayba at Tibian. As requested, we'll go ahead with the pre recorded uh, presentation. And then I think one of the presenters is with us. Yeah, yeah, I'm here with you. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, break and play, uh, play the recording, please. In this presentation, we'll talk about a simulation study of speed control at congested arms of roundabouts. Roundabouts are introduced at intersections to improve traffic safety and efficiency. A roundabout is a type of intersection where traffic flows in one direction around a central island. The flow priority is given to the vehicles within the roundabout. However, traffic congestion at roundabout is becoming a traveling issue that traffic engineers must address more seriously. Several factors were shown to affect the performance of roundabouts that include their geometrical features and driving behaviors. Several studies were conducted to evaluate the performance and capacity of roundabouts using different metrics such as the radius of the roundabout, traffic volumes, and traffic flow rates. The finding of these studies suggest that the performance of roundabouts is greatly affected by their geometrical design and the driving behaviors. Despite the promising results of these studies, None of them has investigated the effect of speed control on the performance of roundabouts. In this work, we investigate the effect of speed control at congested arms on the capacity of roundabouts. To this effect, we have designed a simulation study using the microscopic traffic simulator SUMO. To evaluate the effect of speed control on the performance of roundabouts, we performed 
two simulation scenarios using Zoom. We used a roundabout with four arms that connect four incoming and four outgoing flow directions for both scenarios. In this work, we used the NetEdit 1.9.2 to create the traffic network with its routes. And also, we used a simplified version of the roundabout where all the arms are assumed to have only two lanes. In the first scenario, the right arm has 40% of the traffic, while the other 60% of the traffic is equally distributed across the three other arms. In the second scenario, 60% of the traffic is distributed equally on the left and right arms, while the remaining 40% are distributed evenly on the top and the bottom arms. To define these scenarios in Sumo, we use the file randomtrips.py, which is provided by the, the Sumo installation. For both simulation scenarios, we executed the simulation schema 10 times using 1000 vehicles, and we recorded the total travel time, which is the average total time vehicles spend to reach their destinations, measured in seconds. And the waiting time, which is the average time in which the vehicle speeds were below or equal 0.1 meter per second. And the time loss, which is the average time lost by vehicles due to driving below their ideal speeds. As shown in these figures, the total travel time decreases as the speed factor increases at the congested arms. This is to be expected as the increased speeds for part of the traffic minimizes the travel time. Nevertheless, the decrement becomes marginal in the case of 125% and 150% speed factors, especially in the case of the two congested arms. For instance, the figure on the left shows that the total travel time in the case of the one congested arm decreases by 10% after increasing the speed factor on the congested arm from 100% to 125%. However, in the case of increasing the speed factor from 125% to 150%, the total travel time decreases by only 2.8%. In the case of the two congested arms, increasing the speed factor from 100% to 125% reduces the travel time by 3.8%, while incrementing the speed factor from 125% to 150% lowers the travel time by only 1.3%. In general, the results given in these figures show that the inc increasing the speed on congested arms of the roundabout can minimize the total travel time. However, after a certain threshold, the improvement becomes marginal as more arms become crowded and uh, the increment threshold becomes smaller. The results also show that for the same traffic volume, the total travel times in the case of the one congested arm are lower than for that of the two congested arms for all of the simulated speed factors. This observation leads us to conclude that the traffic volume on the arms of the, round of the roundabouts are an essential factor that must be considered in designing future adaptable plans for improving the efficiency of roundabouts. As with the situation in the case of the total travel time, an increase in the speed factor minimizes the average waiting time of vehicles. Furthermore, the decrement in the waiting time becomes marginal after reaching a certain threshold. The given results also show that the average waiting time in the case of the one congested arm are less than the average waiting times in the case of the two congested arms for all the simulated speed factors. The results also indicate that the difference between the waiting times in the cases of the one and the two congested arms becomes larger as the speed factor increases. In conformance with the total travel time and waiting time results, increasing the speed factor minimizes the travel time loss. Moreover, after raising the speed factor above a certain threshold, any improvement in time loss becomes marginal. The results show that the time lost in the case of the one congested arm is less than for that uh, the time lost in the two congested arms for all values of the simulated speed factors. This observation fosters our previous findings that the distribution of traffic volumes on the arms of, around, of a roundabout is a major factor affecting its performance. 
To conclude, in this paper, we presented a simulation study to investigate the effect of speed control at congested arms on the performance of roundabouts. Our results indicate that increasing the speed on the roundabouts congested arms by a certain threshold helps improve the traffic flow and minimizes the travel time. Moreover, the result shows that the distribution of traffic volumes on the arms of the roundabouts affects its performance. Our future work includes investigating dynamic techniques that adjust speed regulations on roads to adapt to the highly dynamic traffic conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmed. You are? You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Yes. Uh, Any question? Okay. What is the solution you are proposing? Yeah, uh, currently we are investigating uh, like uh, an adaptive uh, displays that can adjust the speeds according to the traffic volumes. Uh, what we are trying to do is we can uh, we, we we are planning to compute like an optimal speed that can enhance the performance at roundabouts. So we are proposing a dynamic displays, like uh, like LCDs or whatever it is, that uh, we can uh, like uh, uh, perceive uh, the traffic volumes and the directions, and uh, from that we can compute like an optimal speeds that will improve the efficiency of uh, the roundabouts or enhance the capacity and uh, the traffic flow. Yeah, it, it depends on the traffic volume. Actually, uh, some certain studies suggest that uh, up to a certain threshold, uh, the roundabouts uh, outperforms the traditional traffic lights. But uh, with larger traffic volumes, uh, the roundabouts performance will go uh, bad and more chaos and uh, more congestion. So the traffic lights with larger traffic volumes uh, will outperform the roundabouts. And is there any any difference in the uh, on the calculation of, of movement in the roundabout as the lines increase or decrease? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, could you repeat your I question? Mean, is, is, is there any difference in, in, in timing and in uh, pressure when when the roundabout is big? Have maybe maybe four? Yeah, 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 yeah. Miles? Exactly, exactly. The, the, the geometry of the roundabout greatly affects the traffic performance. That's for sure. But the problem here is we cannot adjust the geometry. We are, uh, our solution or what we are trying to do is we have this fixed geometry of the roundabout. We cannot like control that. We, we, this is out of our control. So what we are trying to do is to compute the speeds on the arms of the roundabouts that can improve the traffic because the geometry we cannot change. If you in uh, like uh, enlarge the geometry, that will allow uh, that will give the vehicles uh, like more space to uh, for the maneuvers and all these stuff. So that will enhance the performance of the roundabout for sure. But that's the problem is that we cannot like play with the geometry. This is something like hard to do we need to, to do like physical uh, like work so what we are trying to do is just like uh, propose an intelligent systems uh, that just like uh, deal with the current traffic conditions thank you you're welcome you're welcome is there any other inquiries from the audience if not then we will move to the thank next you Debar. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for your uh, colleagues. Uh, the, the last paper in this session is entitled The, Real, the, Real, uh, the Reality of Using Open Source uh, Integrated Library System in Omani Academic Libraries. The author of this, of this paper are uh, Farida Tawfi, Gamal Salmi, and Ahmed Shahat. Uh, Farida will present. Are you with us, Farida? Uh, 
Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh to everyone. Uh, as I uh, as I submit my paper in Arabic, so I'll be presenting in Arabic, inshallah. Yeah, uh, probably. Arabic or English, yes, or no? Okay. Ah, uh, ورقة من إعداد فريد الطوقي دكتور جمال السامي والدكتور أحمد ماهر شهر إن شاء الله راح أتكلم عن مقدمة الدراسة ملخص الدراسات السابقة منهجية الدراسة وأخيرا عرض لملخص نتائج الدراسة والتوصيات في مقدمة الدراسة بشكل سريع نتكلم عن مشكلة الدراسة طبعا على الرغم من ظهور وتزايد نظم المكتبات المتكاملة مفتوحة المصدر واستمرار إجراء التعديلات والإضافات التي تخدم حاجة المكتبات بشكل عام والمكتبات الأكاديمية بشكل خاص إلا أن واقع أحلال هذه النظم في المكتبات الأكاديمية العمانية لم يظهر بشكل واسع فضلا عن زيادة الإنفاق في شراء النظم التجارية لإدارة المكتبات وطلب الدعم الفني من الشركات التجارية أما بالنسبة لإهداف الدراسة فكان الهدف الرئيسي للدراسة التعرف على واقع استخدام نظم المكتبات المتكاملة مفتوحة المصدر من المكتبات الأكاديمية العمانية كما تضمنت الدراسة أهداف فرعية منها التعرف على مدى وعي متخذي القرار واختصاصي المعلومات في المكتبات الأكاديمية العمانية بمفهوم النظم مفتوحة المصدر وأهمية استخدام نظم المكتبات المتكاملة مفتوحة المصدر والمزايا التي تقدمها كما سعت الدراسة على التعرف على مدى التقبل متخذي القرار واختصاصي المعلومات لإحلال هذه النظم في المكتبات الأكاديمية العمانية التعرف على العوامل المحفزة لاستخدام هذه النظم وأخيراً التعرف على التحديات التي تواجه المكتبات الأكاديمية العمانية في استخدام نظم المكتبات المتكاملة مفتوحة المصدر كما جاءت أسئلة الدراسة انعكاساً لأهداف الدراسة ننتقل إلى ملخص الدراسات السابقة في ملخص الدراسات السابقة أشارت الدراسات إلى تعدد استخدامات هذه الأنظمة من قبل مختلف أنواع المكتبات لنجد جملة من الدراسات السابقة تشير إلى تقبل واستخدام المكتبات الأكاديمية لهذه النظم في المقا... خاصة من قبل الدول النامية كما شارت دراسات أخرى إلى عكس ذلك بالنسبة للعوامل المحفزة أشارت الدراسات السابقة لوجود مجموعة من العوامل المحفزة لاستخدام نظم المكتبات المتكاملة مفتوحة المصدر منها المرونة سهولة سهولة توفرها سهولة استخدامها حماية أمنية عالية توفر الدعم الفني بصورة كبيرة سرعة الاستجابة وأنها منخفضة التكلفة مقارنة طبعا بالنظم التجارية التي تعد ذات كلفة عالية توفر المرونة الدعم من قبل المقابل المادي أو أنها محتكرة للمؤسس فقط واستجابة بطيئة للتعديلات إضافة إلى حماية أمنية عالية أما بالنسبة للتحديات فتحدثت دراسات سابقة عن جملة من التحديات أهمها تحديات في إطار الوعي والمعرفة تحديات في إطار التثبيت والتشغيل في إطار توفر دليل المستخدم كما تحدثت أيضا دراسات سابقة عن تحديات في إطار التعديل والتطوير وإطار الدعم الفني والصيانة ننتقل لمنهجية للمنهجية التي تبعتها الدراسة الحالي الحالية اتبعت الدراسة الحالية المنهج النوعي كما استرشدت الدراسة بنموذج قبول التكنولوجيا تام مفتاحا للبحث فيما يتعلق بمدى التقبل والعوامل المحفزة والتحديات أما بالنسبة لمجتمع الدراسة فكان يتكون من متخذي القرار اختصاصي المعلومات والفنيين من 63 مكتبة بنسبة 29 مكتبة أكاديمية خاصة و34 مكتبة أكاديمية حكومية أما العينة فاستعانت الدراسة بالعينة القصدية حيث تكونت عينة الدراسة من 16 مكتبة أكاديمية حكومية وخاصة بنسبة 25% الجدول واحد يوضح تفاصيل العينة المشمولة بالدراسة فكان إجمالي المشاركين 27 مشارك سبع انقسموا إلى 7 اختصاصي معلومات 4 موظفي فنيين و16 متخذ قرار كما استعانت الدراسة بأداتين لجمع البيانات الأداة الأولى مقابلات فردية شبه مفتوحة كانت للفئة الأولى التي تمثلت في متخذي القرار أما الأداة الثانية فكانت مجموعات الفوكس جروب التي تمثلت في الفئة الثانية المهنيين والفنيين
أجرينا مقابلتين فوكس جروب المقابلة الأولى تكونت من فني واحد وأربع اختصاصي معلومات والمقابلة الثانية تكونت من ثلاثة اختصاصي معلومات ننتقل لعرض ملخص نتائج الدراسة والتوصيات بالنسبة للهدف الرئيسي الأول واقع استخدام نظم المكتبات المتكاملة مفتوحة المصدر في المكتبات الأكاديمية فأشارت نتائج الدراسة لوجود تعدد لأنواع النظم المستخدمة في إدارة العمليات المكتبية في المكتبات الأكاديمية حيث تبين وجود ثمان مكتبات تستخدم نظم تجارية عالمية مكتبتين تستخدمان نظم تجارية مطورة محلية مكتبة واحدة تستخدم نظام محلي مطور من قبل فنية المؤسسة الأكاديمية وخمس مكتبات مطبقة لنظم العالمية مفتوحة المصدر إلا أن واقع استخدام هذه النظم لا يزال في مراحله الأولية في المكتبات الأكاديمية العمانية حيث أن عدد المكتبات المطبقة كان أقل من نصف العينة المشمولة في الدراسة إضافة إلى أن المكتبات المطبقة لهذه النظم توجهت لتطبيق النظام ذاته ألا وهو نظام كوها على الرغم من وجود أكثر من 11 نظام مفتوح المصدر يستخدم من قبل الدول الأخرى بالنسبة لهدف مدى وعي متخذي القرار فاتضح انخفاض مستوى الوعي لدى معظم المشاركين حيث ربط بعض متخذي القرار في المكتبات المطبقة والغير المطبقة عملية اتخاذ القرار للتحول لهذه النظم بالعجز في الجانب المالي للمؤسسة الأكاديمية بالإضافة لعدم وعيهم بإمكانيات ومزايا نظم المكتبات المتكاملة مفتوحة المصدر كان من ضمن الأسباب لعدم التوجه نحو تطبيق هذه النظم ولتراجع أحد المكتبات وأشار المشاركون إلى الأدوار التوعوية التي تمثلت في أنها أدوار تشاركية تكاملية تقع على عاتق المؤسسة الأكاديمية والأفراد العاملين المتمثلة في الإدارات العليا ومتخذي القرار والمكتبين إضافة إلى الأدوار التوعوية التي تلعبها الجهات الحكومية والجمعيات المختصة بالمكتبات المتمثلة في وزارة النقل والاتصالات وجمعية المعلومات وتقنية المعلومات والجمعية العمانية للمكتبات والمعلومات. بالنسبة لمدى تقبل متخذي القرار، اتضح أن سياسة المؤسسة نحو تبني هذه النظم لها دور كبير في مدى تقبل متخذي القرار واختصاصي المعلومات لإحلال واستخدام هذه النظم في المكتبات الأكاديمية العمانية، بالإضافة إلى اعتماد المكتبات المطبقة لنظم المكتبات المتكاملة مفتوحة المصدر على النظام في العمليات المكتبية الأساسية. كما اتضح أيضا أن التوجهات المستقبلية نحو التحول نظم المكتبات المتكاملة مفتوحة المصدر للمكتبات الغير مطبقة والمكتبات التي تراجعت أشارت الدراسة إلى وجود مجموعة من العوامل المحفزة لاستخدام هذه النظم منها العوامل المالية وأنها نظم متكاملة سهلة الاستخدام نظم غير محتكرة إمكانية التعديل والتطوير الاستدامة والتوافق مع التوجهات الحديثة أما بالنسبة للتحديات التي أشارت إليها نتائج الدراسة فتبين وجود تحديات فنية وتحديات أمنية وبشرية وإدارية بالنسبة للتحديات الفنية كانت تحدثت عن هجرة البيانات لنظام المكتبات المتكامل مفتوح المصدر برمجة النظام والتحديث توفر الدعم الفني مستوى الاستجابة للدعم الفني أما بالنسبة للتحديات البشرية فتضح وجود عدم تقبل للتغيير قلة في الكوادر البشرية عدم التعرف على التجارب الناجحة للمكتبات المطبقة أما بالنسبة للتحديات الإدارية فكان فتضح وجود تحدي في آلية اتخاذ القرار وعدم الثقة بإمكانيات الكوادر العمانية ننتقل أخيرا إلى أهم التوصيات التي خرجت منها الدراسة أولا تفعيل أدوار التوعية لنشر الوعي بأهمية التحول نحو نظم المكتبات المتكاملة مفتوحة المصدر متخذي القرار والمكتبيين بعقد الندوات والمؤتمرات للمزيد من الورش التعريفية بشأن هذه النظم مع ضرورة عرض التجارب الناجحة للمكتبات المطبقة تقديم التشجيع والحوافز من قبل وزارة النقل والاتصالات وتقنية المعلومات للمؤسسات الأكاديمية العمانية بضرورة تبني النظم مفتوحة المصدر وذلك من خلال توفير الدورات والورش التدريبية وتوفير الدعم الفني الخاص بهذه النظم حث الجمعية العمانية للمكتبات والمعلومات على الإسهام بأنشطة وفعاليات مختلفة تسهم في تعزيز حركة النظم مفتوحة المصدر وإيجاد الوعي بين المختصين في المكتبات لما لها من أدوار وأثار واضحة قيمة من المفيد جدا الأخذ بها تأسيس مجموعة من فني المكتبات سواء الحكومية أو الخاصة لتقديم الدعم الفني بالتعاون مع مركز التميز للبرمجيات الحرة ومفتوحة المصدر وشركة ويبرو 
وبدور هي سيسهم في توفير الدعم الفني وزيادة إمكانية التحول لنظم المكتبات المتكاملة مفتوحة النص دراسة إمكانية قيام وزارة التعليم العالي والبحث العلمي والابتكار بتوحيد النظام المستخدم في إدارة المكتبات سواء كانت نظم تجارية أو نظم مفتوحة المصدر لدى المكتبات الأكاديمية بالسلطنة ذات الأحجام المتشابهة أو الأنواع المتشابهة بهدف تحقيق التشارك في الخبرات الفنية بين اختصاصي الفني وفني المكتبات أخيرا تأسيس منصة مدارة من قبل الجمعية العمانية للمكتبات والمعلومات توفر تفاصيل النظم المستخدمة لدى جميع أنواع المكتبات العمانية الأمر الذي سيسهم في تسهيل عملية اتخاذ القرار للتحول نحو النظام الذي يتناسب مع متطلبات واحتياجات المكتبة نهاية العرض شكرا لحسن استماع شكرا فريدة عفوا دكتور في أسئلة من مشاركين هل في أي سؤال طيب فريدة بالنسبة ل الفيدباك اللي أخذتوها أنت قلت إن التكلفة هي كانت السبب الرئيسي للتوجه إلى برامج مفتوحة المصدر هل تظن أن البرامج مفتوحة المصدر يعني إذا جينا إلى التكلفة هي أقل بكثير من البرامج التجارية لأنه في المقابل تحتاج إلى يعني دعم فني قوي يا إما من خلال شركة خارجية أو خدمة خارجية أو من خلال تكوين وحدة دعم فني قوي بالمؤسسة فهل هذا يقلل التكلفة في رأيك؟ هو دكتور احنا لو تكلمنا كنظام أولا نظام تجاري يحتاج, يحتاج لشراء سواء كان شراء للنظام أو شراء للدعم الفني أما بالنسبة للنظم مفتوحة المصدر فهي نظم متوفرة من خلال الإنترنت يمكن تحميلها مجانا هذا أول شيء الدعم الفني يعتمد على حجم المؤسسة والعمليات المدارة في المكتبة فإذا كان الدعم حجم المؤسسة حجم كبير ممكن يعني فني المؤسسة يقوم يعني تقديمهم لورش ترفع من مستوى إمكانيتهم في تقديم الدعم الفني مما يقلل الاعتماد على الدعم الفني المقدم من قبل الشركات التجارية طبعا هذه الأشياء تحدث بالتدريج ما ممكن يعني نعتمد على نظام مفتوح المصدر ودعم فني مؤسسي دون دون الاستعانة بالدعم الفني الخارج كبداية عند تطبيق نظام مفتوح المصدر في المستقبل ممكن نستغنى عن الدعم التجاري ونعتمد على الدعم الفني المقدم من قبل المؤسسة بهذه الطريقة نحن نقلل التكلفة والضغط على المؤسسات التي تعتمد على النظم التجارية بالنسبة للأنظمة المستخدمة في المكتبات في الصدى برأيك العزوف عن استخدام أو الانتقال إلى إلى مصادر مفتوحة المصدر هل هو بسبب نقص الخبرات؟ هل نقص الخبرات الفنية سواء كان من المتخصصين في المكتبات؟ لأن إذا تكلمنا عن الدعم الفني يعني المتخصصين في في الآي تي فقط بدون لا بالباك جراوند قد ما يكون عندهم كما تقول الخبرة الكافية إنهم يديروا نظام مكتبات أن تحتاج شخص يكون عنده على الأقل مالتي سبيشاليتي ولا خبرة في في مجال في مجال المكتبات حتى لو كان عنده أي في باجرام فهل تعتقد إن الخبرة أو نقص الخبرة الكافية هي السبب في العزوف عن هو دكتور من ضمن الأسباب كانت الخبرة بالإضافة إلى أن متخذي القرار ثقتهم بالكوادر يعني ليست قوية ما ما قادرين يعتمدوا على الكوادر الموجودة ككادر فني يقدم دعم فني فممكن يعني اختصاص المعلومات بالإضافة إلى الفني يعملوا جنبا لجنب على أساس يقدموا الدعم الفني للنظام المطبق في المكتبة.
لكن لما نتكلم عن نظام مكتبه كبير مثلا مثل مكتبه مكتبات جامعه سلطان قبوس اللي هي كل سبع او ثمان مكتبات كلها تشتغل بنظام واحد ما مدى الطاقه التشغيليه اللي يحتاجها نظام مكتبه المكتبه نتكلم عن الفنيين لأن كما كما ذكرت انت ان كان في تراجع وذكر واظنك انك تقصد تقصدي الجامعه لان كان فعلا في في فتره محدده كان الناس توجه الى الى اقتناء برنامج مفتوح المصدر كانت الاستعدادات في هذا الاتجاه لكن في لحظه معينه تم يعني إدارة الدفة إلى وجهة أخرى هو دكتور ف... مثل ما أنا وضحت دكتور آه أن الدعم الفني كبداية عند تطبيق نظام مفتوح المصدر ممكن الاعتماد على آه شركة خارجية تقدم دعم الفني وأنا عندي نماذج لمؤسسات أكاديمية طبقت نظام مفتوح المصدر اعتمدت كبداية على آه دعم فني تجاري أو دعم فني خارجي بغض النظر إذا كان داخل السلطنة أو خارج السلطنة من خلال آه التعاون هذا صار آه يعني تحويل آه من الدعم الفني التجاري للدعم الفني آه المؤسسي يعني اعتمدوا على الفنيين الموجودين في المؤسسة فالانتقال يصير بالتدريج يعني ما ممكن أنا أطبق نظام مفتوح المصدر وأعتمد على دعم فني داخلي فقط أو مؤسسي فقط لازم يكون في تعاون حتى يتم الانتقال الكلي إلى نظام مفتوح المصدر وضمان استمرارية هذا النظام وبعد لا تنسى أن في جانب آخر هي ليست ليست مسألة تشغيل النظام فقط لكن مسألة تطوير النظام لأنه عندك على سبيل المثال في الـ IT فيلد كل حاجة تتغير وتتطور اللي تحتاجين اللي تحتاج المؤسسة ما فقط شخص يدير نظام ويقوم شغال اللي يحتاجه إلى كادر قادر أنه يعني يطور هذا النظام تماشيا مع تطورات سواء كانت في 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 تخصص المكتبات والمعلومات في المصادر التي تتوفر وسوف تتوفر في التقنيات التي يعني يتم استحداثها وتطويرها بين فينة واخرى فهذا ايضا يجب انها تؤخذ في الحسبان يعني اذا كان يعني توجهنا هذا التوجه شكرا جزيلا لك فريده على هذا العرض الممتاز وعن التوضيح في حد عنده تعليق او استفسار او اضافه عن فيما قدم سواء عن ورقته او عن اي ورقه اخرى نحن ما زال عندنا عشر دقائق من وقت الجلسه فاذا ح... فاذا ح... اي احد من المتحدثين عنده زياده او تعليق او او سؤال وإذا لم يكن هناك أي ملاحظات أو أي تعليق أو أي استفسار نود أن نشكركم شكرا جزيلا على مشاركتكم في هذه الجلسة وعلى التزامكم في الحضور والبقاء في الجلسة و عرض أوراقكم التي استفدنا منها كثيرا وتبادل الخبرات الذي حصل في هذه الجلسة شكرا جزيلا لكم شكرا دكتور بشير Thank you دكتور بشير for your presence and for your presentation والشكر موصول لجميع المتحدثين سواء اللي عرضوا أو اللي شاركوا في في الأوراق ولم يتمكنوا من الحضور والعرض شكرا جزيلا لكم ونتمنى ان شاء الله تعالى لكم قضاء وقت سعيد ويومكم طيب ان شاء الله شكرا دكتور ما قصرت شكرا جزيلا شكرا شكرا دكتور ننهي بحمد